Hi, welcome. Uh, today we're going to do a tutorial on how to set up DigiGrade legs in VRChat and stuff. But first, I want to show you the guy who actually thought of this stuff up. So, here he is. Hi, welcome to this tutorial on how to fix up DigiGrade legs so that they actually perform properly. Uh, some time ago, I was going around various fairy worlds, as you do, and I noticed all the locked ankles and all the DigiGrade legs. This drove me up the wall, and after way too much time, way too much effort, now, in theory, you should be able to go take your leg and make it be able to deform properly. So I hope you get something out of this tutorial for the purposes of fixing up your legs, and I hope to see you with everything fixed up. So it takes a little bit of rework in the 3D software with some specific bone layouts that we're going to be covering in this tutorial. Uh, I would recommend having intermediate skills in Blender and basic skills in Unity to follow along with this tutorial in a manageable sense. Uh, it, you can give it a go, but just be aware we are going to deal with some mid-level techniques here. So we're going to need two rigs per leg. One's going to be a plantigrade rig and one's going to be a digigrade rig. The first one that we're actually going to start on is the digigrade a rig, which will be the one that's weighted and accurate to how the mesh actually is. Then we'll set up the plantigrade rig, which is the one that uh, VRChat and Unity in general uses to drive the model. Okay, so before we even start, there's one thing that we need to stress here. Uh, parallelism is an important component here. So when we get to the bones, setting them up in parallel is paramount to this working. So just bear that in mind. So here we've got our um, good old basic rig. This this just represents any character, and it's currently set up with a uh, plantigrade style rig. This is the style rig you're probably familiar with in VR chat. It works fine. It works fine. But we don't want that anymore, do we? We want a digigrade leg. Um, so first and foremost, we name our bones properly. So what you want to do, you want to click onto a bone, and I would recommend naming the bones exactly how they are in Unity. So upper leg L, lower leg L, uh, and this one should be foot L when Blender decides it lets me choose it. There it is. And then toe L, or toes, whichever one you want to do. That kind of standardizes our uh, setup, and so we're all working on the same page, because you run into a problem, you want to be on the same page, right? Um, so the first step. Make sure your bones are named correctly. So any uh, keys that I press are down in the bottom left of the screen. What we're going to do, we're going to first select onto our rig and we're going to go into edit mode specifically. And for this one, quite simply, all we want to do is we want to move this rig how it should actually look. First, just get a rough idea of its position. However, this bone and this bone must be parallel. This is, like I said, this is where this importance comes in. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab um, this bone and we're going to pull this one forwards as well. Now you'll see our mesh is completely off now. So we will have to edit the mesh slightly to get it to fit the rig. It's not a perfect solution. It's not going to immediately just fit. That, this parallelism is important to getting it to work. So there's a few ways we can do this. The way that I'm personally going to set this up I'm going to pull this forwards a little bit. I'm going to grab onto this. I'm going to hit Shift S and then selection to cursor. No, sorry, uh, cursor to selected. Um, then we're going to create a new in object mode. We're going to switch over to object mode. Uh, we're going to create a new plane. We're going to go into edit mode here and we're going to delete these plane bits here. Uh, and we're going to delete two vertexes. We're then going to hit one vertex here. We're going to hit uh, Shift S for our selection again. And then we're going to hit uh, Selection to Cursor. Great. We're now going to go back into Object Mode. We're then going to click back onto the rig, go back into Edit Mode, click on this joint here, Shift S, Cursor to Selected, back out of Edit Mode, back onto this, uh, this edge that we've made here, grab this edge, Control Shift, cursor, uh, Selection to Cursor again. If we go into uh, edit mode by pressing Z, uh, wireframe mode, I should say, by pressing Z, and then select both vertexes, I'm just going to extrude this out. 
And then I'm going to go into a side view by pressing three on the numpad. And I'm going to pull this back ever so slightly. This is just to give me a ref visual guide of that angle. What I'm now going to do is we can see that our origin point is up at this corner. If it isn't, what I would recommend is by pressing onto it, uh, putting your cursor to selected, going back into object mode, and then set origin, origin to 3D cursor. That will make sure that it's in that corner. That's the vertex we want. Then we go down to this bottom bit of the foot here. We grab onto this uh, section here. Shift S again, cursor to selected. This time we go, jump, go into object mode and we stay in object mode this time. And we shift S, uh, uh, selection to cursor. Excellent. Now, if I go into the side view, we can see what angle that is compared to what angle this is. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab this because I like where this position is for the foot. I'm actually going to pull this forwards until this edge lines exactly up with this bit. And I'm just zooming in really far. There are more accurate ways of doing this, but this is good enough for it to work. Great. So now I can see where that needs to be. So what I can do is uh, cursor to selected. It'll go to that origin point. We go back to our rig. We click onto here. Um, and then we have our selection to cursor. Great. How you do this exactly doesn't really matter. All that matters is that this leg and this leg um, well, these two legs independently share the exact same down angle. That's what matters here. Once you've set that up, that's nearly our digigrade bit set up. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to edit this mesh. Now, when you come to use your mesh, you'll likely have, if you if it's a pre-existing model, a lot more topology than it's currently on this model. Don't worry, we're just going to use a bit of um, soft selection or proportional editing to move it around. So we're just going to grab our uh, soft selection up there. And we're going to move it around this circle here we can uh control with the uh, middle mouse wheel and we just want to literally move it so that it better fits um the rig so we're going to move that there we're going to pull that forward a bit as well excellent that's the digigrade leg uh set into position now we've got to skin it so we can delete this now. That's irrelevant. We don't need that anymore. What we can, what we want to do now is weight painting. Uh, so what you'll want to do, click onto the rig, then with shift, click onto the body itself. If we then go to weight painting, you should be then able to select onto these bones and see where the weight is. Now, currently your weight painting, if it's already been done, will probably be something like this, which is obviously not appropriate for what we want. Unless you really want a stretchy bean. So what we want to do is we want to essentially go over to our draw brush, go to our tools, and here's a big, big selection bit here. Hit subtract, make your brush fairly large. And before we do anything, actually, we want to go up to here and make sure vertex, uh, vertex group X is on. For this model specifically, it's actually got a mirror modifier on, so this isn't required. But for your model, if it is past a point with a mirror modifier, you will want to make sure that um, this is selected on. With that said, uh, what you want to do is remove everything from the ankle. And what you're looking for particularly is this kind of angle here. You want this part of the ankle to move with the foot bone and then everything else to kind of move alongside without it. So we're going to grab that and we're going to do that there. Excellent. Now we're going to grab them to this bone. And we're going to do the exact opposite of subtract, which, uh, if you paid attention in math class, would mean an addition. Excellent. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to literally go the other way. Don't be too afraid of this. It looks more scary than it actually is. All we're doing here is saying uh, to the model which part of it we want it to move. Great. That's it relatively set. Now, you don't even have to be the cleanest with this. But what, and what I would recommend is once you've painted this in, you go to a blur brush, which is this one here. It's the one just literally right below the regular draw brush. Make this fairly large. Just give it a blur. Now, this will still want some refinement, but for your first little uh, interaction with it, it should be fine. And what you'll find now is that this leg now moves a bit more naturally. Now, of course, we went a little too aggressive up here, right? 
So what we just want to do, we just want to subtract. We just want to make sure that that's a bit nicer blending. That's the subtraction kid. There we go. Just like I say, we're just bringing it back ever so slightly. Still usually want to blur things in, but not too aggressively. On this side, we also want to blur as well. We want to blur on both sides of it. Now, if we select onto this, we should have digigrade deformation. Obviously, things like beans and anything separate will be broken. What I'd recommend is we do a mesh data transfer on those to fix them. So if you've got things like clothing or other things that are kept separate on the model, such as the beans here, you can actually see that we've moved these beans off position now. Um, first, you'll want to move them relatively back into position where they should be. So once again, you can use your soft selection, soft selection up here. Now they just press the button or you can press O to turn it on and off. But I'm just going to move this up slightly and actually reconnect it into the foot. Excellent. Uh, and this bit probably once pulled down just a little bit. Sweet. But that's still going to need reweighted. I have, I have an entire tutorial on it, so you can check that up there. But we're just going to use a mesh data transfer to get these weights that we've just put onto the main body onto these beans. This applies to things like clothing. This applies to things like shoes. Anything that's accessories, this same technique applies. So we're going to grab um, our object that we want the vertex groups on, then the things that we're transferring it from, which in this case is this body part. We're then going to press space or F3, and then we're going to literally type in uh, trans uh, mesh data. That's what you're looking for. It's also in object and relations. You can see there. So it's also up here, object uh, relations, transfer mesh data. You're going to then select vertex groups, and then you want to switch this to all layers. That will have actually done that now. There's, no, there's nothing that really confirms it. You just want to click onto this. Uh, sorry, no, you don't want to do that. You want to click onto your rig. Then you want to click onto the beans. Then we want to go onto weight paint, and you'll see it looks a little rough. This is, a, this is something that happens with uh, mesh data transfer. You've just got to blur it all out. And what you should see now is that now all actually is weighted properly and no longer stretches. Right, so with all that weight painted now, that's all well and good to go. However, now we need to set up the plantigrade rig. So to do that, what I would recommend is we go onto this rig here and we go into tab mode. We then grab that rig, we grab that rig, and we grab that rig. We ignore the tours for this. I'm then going to hit Shift D and then left click off it so it resets itself back into position. And what you'll see here is that we now have those named bones but with 001. So what we want to do, we want to double click quite quickly to bring it up, get rid of the 001, and then call this Planty. And you want to do this on all of those 001 bones. Remember, this needs done on both sides, or you can symmetrize it. So foot L, foot R, foot L01. One wants to be called foot plenty. And now I want to do the same for the other side. So foot R, foot plenty. Lower leg, plenty. And then upper leg. Uh, excellent. So we've now got our na bones named properly. What we're looking for now is you'll want to go down to your foot and foot plenty. If you make sure this X mirror is turned on, and what you want to do, you want to pull this forwards just so it's a bit in front of the uh, right where the foot usually is and just behind the toes. Then what we want to do is we want to move um, lower leg planty, lower leg planty L, and we want to move this directly down. There are a few ways of doing this, but you can do this by eye. Just take this slow. What we want to do 
We're going to use this point as a reference here, and we want it to come straight down to here. So what we're going to do, I'm going to move it down with G, and I'm just literally going to move it relatively into position. And I'm just literally going to zoom in enough to see where these points line up. And I just want to get it as far as possibly close to it sent lined up. Perfect. And that is it. With that, the planty rig is sorted. Um, that is your rig ready to go. So what you should see is uh, upper leg planty there, lower leg planty there, and then um, this one here should be foot planty. On the other side of the rig, that should be upper leg, that should be lower leg, that should be foot, and then this one down here should be toe. Toe might be connected on your model. It depends on how the original creator set it up. Um, either way, personally, I would probably disconnect it, but you should be fine. There is one more thing we need to do on this rig here. Um, I want to cl you want to click onto the um, lower leg planty and Alt P to clear a parent. And we just want to disconnect the bone. We don't want to clear the parent. We just want to disconnect the bone. You should see this happens there. And if you move it around temporarily just to see, you should see this black line appear here. That should be well and gold. With that done, that's the blender side of it mainly. Now, you might want to make some little adjustments to parts of the body like this bit, for example. And again, just use your soft selection and move these parts. You, you can go back and refine this weight paint, and that's not a problem. Um, but once you're happy with it, we're ready to move over into Unity. So, grab everything that you want to export, file, export, FBX. Now, sometimes you might have more objects than this that you don't want to export. Just hit selected objects. I generally recommend doing that anyways. And save it somewhere where maybe it makes sense. Right now, I'm going to create a new folder called Digi. And I'm going to shove him in there. Digi. Export FBX. The export into Unity is the same as any other that you're probably doing in for VRChat. So if we come to our Unity scene, I've already pre-prepped this. It's literally just got the SDK in. All we need to do at the moment is we just need to go and we just need to drag and drop him in. So, model resources and scenes, digi, digi. We drop him in. There is our lad. Now, I'd recommend always popping it up there and boom. Here is our boy with a digi elite rig. Now, of course, we have to set him up first, don't we? So, click onto him. Now, you want to set up your materials, you want to set up all your other stuff as well first. Um, but once you're ready, come to your rig, set this as humanoid. We then want to hit apply. That's great. We then want to go to configure, save any scenes. Um, make sure any bones that are missed out are put back in. So for example, on this one, we need the chest. And, one th and make sure there's no jaw bones in. Now, one thing that Unity will do by default is it will select weighted bones as the priority ones. We do not want this. We want the planty bones in here specifically. So if you double click onto these and then hit the delete key, you can get rid of them. Get rid of all your leg bones at the moment. Get rid of every single one of them. Then go down the list and input the correct one named planty. So for example, upper leg is upper leg. To spell it right. Upper leg planty L. Then lower leg planty L. Then finally, we want foot planty L. Now, it may complain that the character is not in T pose. Ignore it. Uh, we know better than Unity. Um, upper leg, we're just going to do the same again. If, if once again, Head can remember how to spell things. Uh, lower leg uh, R. And then finally, foot. Plenty. Ah, excellent. So it will complain. The important thing is that you come down to the bottom and you hit apply. We are not done yet. There's one more thing that we want to do. We want to go to muscles and settings. And we just want to take these two here, the, the uh, upper leg twist and the lower leg twist, and just set them down to zero. This just makes certain that there's no issues with how it's going to work. Great. So that's the rigging done. Uh, once the last thing we need to do is the constraints. 
Right, so the next thing is the constraints. This is the bit that actually makes it all work. Now, I've made a handy little guide, um, a visual representation of which leg is constrained to which one. Um, but if you follow along with the tutorial, this should also make sense as well. This will be in, uh, it's in a tweet in a link in the description below. So what we want to do there is we want to go for upper leg, add component. We want to add a rotation constraint. If you just type in rotation there, we'll get this. We add a source. The source we want for the upper leg is upper leg plenty. And you'll have to switch this over to scene. So upper leg plenty L because we're upper leg to upper leg L. Great. We then want to hit activate and that's great. We then want to go to lower leg, add component, rotation constraint, add a source. This time we want to go once again, go to scene and lower leg plenty L. Excellent. Hit activate. And that one's that one sorted. We then go to foot. We then add a component. We add a rotation constraint. This time we add the upper leg again. So this is adding that upper leg plenty once again. Excellent. Activate. Sorted. And the last one on this leg is going to be the toe. So this one is slightly different. We actually add a parent constraint in this time. And this time we want to add the source um, foot. And we're going to add foot plenty L. Activate. Sweet. And then we just do the exact same on the other side. So once again, add component, rotation constraint, add a source. And you'll see that I'm not changing any of these variables or such. You do not need to. The default is fine. That is good for that one. Add component, rotation constraint. This time, add your source before hitting activate. And lower leg. So this one's going to be lower leg, plenty R. Activate. Foot. Add component, rotation constraint. This is the one that's a little weird because it actually pulls from the upper leg again. So upper leg, uh, plenty R. Activate. And then finally, toe. Add component. This one's the different one, which is a parent constraint. This one is uh, foot. That's foot plenty R. Activate. Wait. So to put this boy into VR chat, I'm just going to click onto him. We're just going to slap an avatar descriptor onto him. We're just going to put a viewport in the right place. Boom. Normally, obviously, you'll want to set all this out properly. That's way beyond the scope of this tutorial. That's set, VR chat SDK, show control screen, auto fix any issues that appear, boom, build and test. I would always recommend you build and test. It's a lot quicker um, when you're doing this. Test avatar built, excellent. Let's go into VR chat. So now with our avatar in the game, if we just test this avatar, we should now see that, that leg, the legs work like that in desktop mode. Now, these legs do come with some slight issues. For example, crouching and walking gives a little bit of a funny animation, as it does with crouching and going into prone. But if you are in VR chat full body tracking, it looks much nicer and gives you a lot more control. Um, just for reference, let's go and see him in actual VR as well, shall we? Right, so as you can see, it actually looks pretty good in VR. You should be able to use this same technique on a variety of different avatars. The proportions and that shouldn't really matter. What really matters in this technique is keeping that parallelogram uh, accurate, or at least as close to accurate as possible. Uh, once all these constraints are set up, it should pretty much just run nicely. And yeah, they'll look pretty good. And there you go. You should now have a DigiLeg model in VRChat. Obviously, you might run into issues. First, recheck this tutorial. But if you do get completely stuck, do feel free to ask for help from either myself or Dragon Skyrunner. We'll both be more than happy to try and help out. Once again, a huge, huge thanks to Dragon Skyrunner for the help and support in making this video and their version of the tutorial, which is still going to be online and they might update it as well. So it might be a little ahead of if anything changes. Um, of course, if you did like this video, do consider liking it, do consider subscribing, I do want to make more tutorials, 
Uh, but with all that said, I genuinely hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time. Bye bye.